Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got an exciting video for you today. This is from Boge RV. That's a 100 watt solar panel sitting in a box right there. No, it is not a fiberglass flexible panel. This is Boge RV's premium SIGS thin cell solar panel. Uh, it's supposed to have some cool features and benefits. This is supposed to be a really, really excellent panel. So I'm gonna put this panel through its paces today and see if it's as good as they claim it is. So let's get right into it. And the panel was properly packaged. You know, I showed you that little intro. That was me. I took the, the padding off of it so you could see the panel. You know, it's got foam all over it, shipped nicely. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. So a very lightweight for a 100 watt uh, solar panel. If you can see that in the sun, look at the color on it. That's right, it's don't have silicone in it, it's got copper. If you can see that little bit of color difference between your standard monocrystalline panel, I'll tell you more about that too in just a minute. So let me finish unboxing it. And there's the SIGS panel laid out in the sun right there. Of course you get the panel, a user manual. It's got some MC4 leads on it already. And you can see the coloration probably from this view, or at least I can, that uh, it's got a little like a chromatic look to it. So just a black monocrystalline style look like with your silicon based panels, because this one is of course SIGS. So it's got a different composition for the semiconductors, which is supposed to bring better low light collection. It's damage resistant, all kinds of benefits. And there's a little shot of the, the data tag. It is their Yuma 100. There's your specs right there. Now there are two options on this Yuma panel. One is adhesive, one is drilled. I picked the drilled model because it's got reinforced rings around the perimeter for attaching with mechanical fasteners or screws. Uh, I can always add adhesive to it later, but the adhesive version is just got double-sided tape only, no reinforced ringlets for installation. Give you another shot of those ringlet right there where you fasten your screws down. And then the back of the panel is just, just white. First test, what this thing is catered for being lightweight. Uh, actual weight just on the panel, 3.46 pounds is what that weighs. So, you know, portable power station, perfect for a camping application. So it's just laying flat in the grass. It's not angle optimized or anything like that on a little power station. So let's see what it's making. 67, 68 watts, just laying right there flat on the ground and the sun is sitting way back at an angle because we're coming into autumn of the year. So, you know, that's not even an optimized angle. So not too bad to start with. Okay, now I've got the panel semi-curved, a little bit better angle. So this is like if you had it on an RV roof or a golf cart roof, you see I got a bend to it right there. So it's not collecting all the sun directly at an angle. It's kind of losing some at the bottom. So let's see what it's making now. 70 watts, like that. Not bad at all. So I got the panel propped up a little bit, a little bit better angle than it was trying to get it a little bit flatter because I'm not, you know, it's not rigid. So you got to support it or let it curve. So not bad curve performance. So let's look at it right here. I do have a few passing high altitude clouds. So curious to see what it makes. So 75 watts uh, going into a power station, which may not have the best tracking, uh, MPPT tracking algorithm in there. So not bad at all. And for reference, it is 85 degrees Fahrenheit outdoor ambient with a five mile an hour easterly breeze. And another angle adjustment. Like I said, I do have some, some diffuse clouds. So I'm having to try to take these readings in between breaks in the clouds. So what do we get this time? 77 watts. There you go, 78. I was about to say, I did see it go to 78 a minute ago. So not terrible at all. That's actually pretty good performance. All right, now I got the Bose RV SIGS panel laying back flat on the ground there. Uh, for reference, back to 70, well, 75 watts now. So I'm gonna shade test it now, see what uh, you know, what it can take before it completely drops out its power production. All right, so about quarter shaded right there. Got a black bag covering the, the bottom of it, so making roughly 40 watts. Okay, got half of the split of the cells covered. Zero watts. Half shaded that direction, vertically zero watts all right i got the top third of the sigs panel shaded now it's tracking 40 watts with a third of it shaded so i want to see how far down i can move it and still keep power so let me i'm going to go down about an inch at a time until i get to the shutoff point well that third is the threshold anything past that roughly third estimate of the panel completely blocked off kills it 
So right there, you know, anything over a third, it completely drops it out. And this will track from, you know, 11 volts. So, you know, that made it flat line. All right, shading removed completely, still flat on the ground. 72 watts. Now time for leaf testing. All right, had some leaves fall on the roof of our RV or picnic tab, wherever you got this mounted, wherever you're using it. So leaves right there like that. 53, 54 watts. Pretty good. Okay, got the leaves on there. 49, 50 watts. Let me throw some more leaves on it. Right there, see what we got now. So, you know, it's affected by shading, but it still functions even with a bunch of crud laying on top of it. But look at this right here. I got a 200 watt panel laying beside it. We're gonna do back to back comparisons. All right, now where the rubber meets the road, here's a 200 watt silicon based monocrystalline bifacial panel right here. All right, there is the Bose RV Yuma SIGS 100. All right, we're gonna do back to back instant swap to see the difference between the two panels. Same power station, everything for consistency. So the SIGs right now, you can see I'm hooked up to the SIGs. It is doing 70 to 71 watts. Now I'm gonna do a direct hot swap right here to the 200 watt bifacial panel, laying flat in the ground, just like the other one. So direct swap right there. Remember this is on the 200 watt. It should produce you know, upwards of 150, 175 watts. It's only making 135, 136. So, uh, and it's just come out, it's not even hot yet. And that one's been out in the sun for an hour and this one is cold. I'll give you a size comparison, direct overlay. So there is the SIGs overlaid on the bifacial panel. You can see, you know, you would think it'd be half the size. Well, it's not. The SIGs module is not as efficient for the collection area, square meters. You know, all the solar panel efficiencies are based on, you know, a thousand watts per meter average. And that's their STC conditions at 77 degrees. And that's how they figure out their efficiency. So SIGs is less efficient for a surface area, but low light conditions, it's supposed to excel. And your standard monocrystalline uh, silicon based panels are around 20 to 24%. Bifacials, you know, I'm, I'm handicapping it right now. So you need to be the same right now as a standard panel because I'm not getting any backlight reflection. So, you know, just keep all that in mind. And yes, I know, you know, the size, but look, look at that. That is thin as a couple of sheets of paper and making that kind of power out of it. Even if it is a little bit larger surface area wise, that's cool. And three pounds, I mean, you can carry that in your backpack and it's not gonna be hurt. Uh, these are tough as nails too. And then that's, you know, close to 30 pounds. And of course it don't move or bend and, uh, you know, you rocks and stuff hit that, it's gonna bust it. Rocks hit this thing, it ain't gonna hurt it at all. And these are supposed to be super duper tough, almost unbreakable. So I mean, you know, try that with a regular <laughs> monocrystalline. Perfect for curved RVs, whatever you got. That is what that is designed for, what it's gonna shine at. Now, low light testing and things like that, once I install it with the boost converter, boost MPPT controller on the golf cart, then I can show you more testing in rainy conditions, low light conditions, things like that. Here's how I've been using the Bose RV Yuma SIGs panel right here on top of the golf cart for a couple of weeks now. It's a little bit different video than normal. I'm actually giving you a real life update. You can see I've got some scratches and scuffs on it from tree limbs. I put a little, uh, little additional screw right here in this little ringlet in the center because it was catching wind so pulled that down right there so you can see all the little different bends to match the roof right it there it expands and contracts with the plastic canopy on the golf cart perfectly so you know working as intended no no problems with it so far so now i'm going to do a low light test you can see the sky conditions completely cloudy today so i'll do a back-to-back -back test between the yuma sigs and a standard monocrystalline first test is on the sigs panel 10.5 ish watts so 10 to 11 watts under the sky conditions quarter of an amp Direct back to back comparison i've got the yuma sigs disconnected and have a standard 100 watt monocrystalline panel now so i get back to back readings so i'm getting 11 watts out of the standard monocrystalline panel and the monocrystalline panel is pretty dirty so not what i expected i'll try that one more time just in case the sky conditions change slightly so back on the sigs panel all right, right back onto the six panel, so 12 watts. So just a little bit of, you know, sky irradiance changes 
uh, it's changing quickly back and forth between you know full cloud and a little bit of diffuse light coming through so a comparable performance in low light conditions between a 100 watt monocrystalline and 100 watt SIGs. And the best performance I have seen out of the SIGs panel thus far was going down the street, coasting, watching the energy meter, and I got to 89 watts under a crystal clear day with a slight breeze over the panel for movement. Didn't catch it on camera because I didn't have the camera with me, but that is the highest rating I have witnessed so far. And here's a better view of the scratches I got on the panel. This is from a pine limb and it scraped it pretty hard in the dark. I didn't know the, the limb was there, so it rubbed across the panel. It's not affected its performance. Uh, time of filming, this panel is 250 bucks. Is it worth the extra over a standard mono panel? Well, in certain use case scenarios, I can say yes. Like golf cart roofs, it's lightweight, it's flexible, RV roofs, things like that. I can see the added cost over a standard $80 to $100 mono. Uh, for standard off-grid or micro-grid installations, is it worth the extra cost? Well, you'll have to decide that on your own. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're interested in this panel, I'll leave a link in the description. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Be safe. Take care.